Good morning, everyone. Welcome to NIU. My name is Ying Xi, and this is my collab, uh, co presenter, Kiang Kim. Uh, we are both assistant professors from uh, NIU here. Um, we are really, uh, we really want to thank Dr. Yang Hee Kim for <laughs> uh, giving us this opportunity to present our work here. It's like, it's like we, are, we bring different ideas and different perspectives into discussion and then it's like we're building a big puzzle together. And our piece of the puzzle is group cognition. So what is group cognition? The idea of group cognition basically comes from uh, studies of computer-supported collaborative learning, what we call CSCL studies. Uh, according, to, according to Dr. Gary Scale, Stale, group cognition is defined as a, group, a study of group interaction. And similarly, some uh, cognitive psychologists also define the cognition as the outcome of group interaction instead of a simple uh, aggregation of individual cognition. When studying group cognition, uh, researchers like to focus on um, physical uh, and virtual artifacts that students uh, create. And then, then we also focus on uh, or study their gestures and words they produce during the interaction. According to Stale, um, there are three levels of group cognition. The first level is the most rudimentary. The, um, it refers to the similarities of individual members' cognition. And then the second level mean, uh, and the third level refers to sharing knowledge and group knowledge. In order to study group cognition in the second and third level, um, students are required to um, to be engaged in intensive co uh, collabor collaboration and negotiation. Then why do we study group cognition? I'm sure you have heard of this saying, uh, it takes a village to raise a child. The raising of a child is certainly inherently social. And CSCL researchers also stress learning is also social. Um, so social learning basically refers to group-based collaborative problem solving uh, and co uh, co knowledge building process. So in order to have, make sure that a collaborative activity is successful, it require, not only requires individual co uh, contribution to the, to the group interaction, but it also requires that everyone knows what is taking place in the, at the group level. Because the concept of a group cognition is so new, um, right now the current research only mainly focus on how to assess or find uh, group cognition, and there are two basic methods. And the first one is called knowledge elicitation. It basically means that students have um, students have to enunciate or articulate what they know about the subject uh, matter. And the second kind is called a, a cognitive analysis, and it's very similar to task analysis or discourse analysis. And we're going to give you a, a few examples of um, studies related to uh, group cognition. In this first study, it's an example of knowledge facilitation. Um, we had all the students create their individual concept maps, and we studied the overlapping part of their concept map. Dr. Kim is going to present his wonderful and fantastic tool uh, <laughs> that can be used for, to study group cognition. One of the most effective and efficient and direct ways to look at the group cognition is dialogue analysis. Collaboration is a dialogical process, so when we analyze the dialogue in the collaboration, we likely to take, we likely tap into more accurately the meaning or structure of group cognition. So I'd like to take this short time to introduce uh, a text visual analytic system I have developed as a possible tool for dialogue analysis. Okay, here's the example I say. Uh, my working assumption is that a writing closely resembles our thinking. So a concrete artifact or manifestation of our cognition. For example, to write something, you must encapsulate your high dimensional knowledge structure into low dimensional sequential linear text form. My interest is to capture and visually represent the knowledge structure reflected in your writing as a network graphs based on the based on the connection is theoretical foundation. So today, I'm gonna uh, briefly share a couple of applications of my tool 
uh, to explore group cognition in the context of online discussion. Okay, one line of my research is to apply this tool in online discussion to take a closer look at knowledge structure interactions at individual level. These are uh, visualized group knowledge structures of four group members over time based on their corresponding text message in the discussion. Each color, red, blue, green, and yellow, indicates each group member's knowledge structures based on their uh, text message in the discussion. This kind of micro-level visualization can provide detailed information on how individual knowledge structures change over time, or how individual knowledge structures influence group cognition. For example, in this case, each group member's <coughs> knowledge structures converge toward one specific individual knowledge structure in the red. So we could assume that the person in red has a strong knowledge structure impact on this group knowledge structure or on this group cognition. Another line of my research is to apply this tool in online discussion to take a broad look at knowledge search interactions at, at group level. These are visualized group knowledge search interactions based on the knowledge structure similarity between the group members. This is not a social network to show student social interactions. This is a network to show <laughs> their knowledge structure interactions. So the thickness of an edge in this network shows the strength of the knowledge structure similarity between the students. So this kind of macro level visualization can provide an easy way to see whose knowledge structure influences whose knowledge structure and who are active or less active in terms of knowledge sharing. For example, in this case, let's take a look at the James. He didn't seem to be active in the discussion, but uh, he didn't seem to be active in knowledge sharing in this discussion, but according to this network, his knowledge structure was finally connected to Andrea, just a little bit at the, at the end of the discussion. So we could assume that the James may partially accept Andrea's thinking or opinion at the end of the, at the, end of the discussion. Further, we can, we, we can zoom in the knowledge structures between James and Andrea to get more detailed information on what concepts or what structures they shared at that time. I left my presentation with the idea of this tool for kids and robotic research. This is what I'm thinking. I may be able to convert kids' natural spoken communications into these knowledge structure networks, for example, to see the difference between kids' group cognition with or without robot, or to see how the interactions with robots can influence kids' language learning, or to see the different kids' group cognitions with or without disability. This is just rough idea level, but I like to get more feedback while attending this, this workshop, so hopefully to get more yeah, answer from you. So I'm gonna finish my presentation here.